Well, good morning and welcome to this week's Market Carver. Happy to have you along. You know, I am so confused. Hobby Lobby is one of our favorite stores to go to. They have Halloween direction, or, uh, <laughs> Halloween decorations, Thanksgiving decorations, and Christmas is even out. This year has truly flown by. 2021 is almost over. We're in the books. Seasonality has changed which means we're now in that period of time, the last half of October, when markets tend to do well. We film this on Tuesday mornings. You know we have the allocation meeting on Monday, and we are at new record highs, both on the Dow and the S&P 500. Amazing things are taking place. We have lots of things to talk about. It's not as bad as it looks on here. I'm going to be able to go through some of them very, very quickly. Style boxes are those cute little things that I had to teach academically uh, when I taught at Purdue. And the bottom line is we're really agnostic to size, and uh, we do have preferences toward value or growth based on valuation, but it's not that we have a particular sector or size that we like to go to. There is a lot of consternation, concern over what's going to happen with interest rates as they begin to rise. Uh, and there's a lot of meat and potatoes on this chart. Uh, I don't want you to get caught up into it too much. Just understand, in a period of rising right rates, going back to 1997, Cumulatively, the indices have done well. The small caps have done better than the large caps, especially the meg caps for some reason or another. Uh, we can go through and talk about that in terms of where it is. Remember, the value of the U.S. dollar has a lot to do uh, with small companies versus large companies. They tend to be more, it, more domestically inclined as opposed to exporting could be part of it. The bond market, those of you I deal with directly have heard me say this all year. If you had to make me pick, am I more worried about the bond market or the stock market? It would definitely be the bond market. Uh, and this chart shows that I am not alone, but that gets scary. One of the things we look for is when it's too overweighted, when the teeter-totter is too far in the wrong direction. You can look at this chart going back all the way to 07. This is the lowest percentage of allocation uh, that professional traders have had uh, to the bond market. Uh, it is a, in a historic period of time. Yes, part of it is the lower interest rates, but part of it is some of the, the craziness that's simply going on inside of the bond market. This one's just for funds. Powell, if you don't know that name, Jerome Powell is the Federal Reserve Chairman. Honestly, we don't know if he has a blind trust like the president does, which means he doesn't know what he owns. He did just issue orders this week that Fed Chair, the, the Federal Reserve people on the board are not allowed to own individual stocks. Frankly, we believe that was already the case. So that was news. But one of the things that he said, um, you know, talking about the market and, and where it was back on October 1st, he's missed a 35% gain in some of the market. Now, here's the point. And that's where we really have to look at the difference between the economy, which he has all of the data, far more than I can get, far more than you can get. He has all of the data and truly missed what the market does. As Adam and I will always remind you, there is a phenomenal difference between economic movement and market movement. And one of the biggest confusions we can get is when we try to clutter our minds with both together. Breath, as you know, is the percentage of companies that are actually performing. And one of the things that Andrew does on the technical side is go through and says, OK, where are we? Well, you can see the S&P 500 has broke through that previous high. That's why we're at new highs as of yesterday. That's a beautiful thing. Now we've got to, we've got to stand there and watch and see what happens. The number of companies above their 20-day moving average is on the uptick. That's great news. Above the 50-day moving average is great news. And we just started to break through that previous high on the 200-day moving average. It's still not to its previous high. That's why you have a red line. You still have a, 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 a the left side going down toward the right. We really want it to be the other way, as you can see in the, two blind, bl the blue line. So Andrew will be watching that and be very careful with it. Some of you have asked about gas gasoline and isn't this hurting the consumer? This is a very, very interesting chart and it just goes with what we've told you at the thirdly. Things change, ladies and gentlemen. Oil prices are well below the de demand destruction levels of the 1980s, or actually even 2008, observed by their fair share of U.S. consumer expenditure baskets. So you can go in and see blue what's going on at the price at the pump. Yes, it is higher, absolutely. But the light blue at the bottom is the percentage that your neighbor has to use of their income to put in the gasoline, to put in the car, to get it to go to places, especially now with more and more of us living 
working from home, this is going to continue to decline. So is it problematic? Not near here in the United States like it is going on over in Europe, especially in that gas prices and things of that nature. Uh, they still have some challenges that are there that are, are really part uh, of an economic concern for the European Union. Seasonality, we are in that great part. Uh, the, this is the S&P 500, fourth quarter since 1978. And any of these events, these are the only ones that have been negative, by the way. Uh, it's phenomenal how often the fourth quarter is positive. The only ones that have been negative have been associated with what we would call a credit wobble, which is why we have Jerome Powell and the Red Federal Reserve on watch all the time. But you can see what the S&P 500 did and high yield. They really haven't been that bad, fourth quarter of 18. Fed had a policy mistake. I would also tell you from a market perspective, if you remember, almost all of the market growth driven going into September was driven by a, a, about, uh, it was about eight companies. The rest of the S&P 500 was actually negative. Uh, the next big one was fourth quarter of 08. We all know the Great Recession. I'm still not convinced they're not going to rename it our depression at some point in time. And of course, when I started my career, I'd been in the business a whopping two weeks before the fourth quarter of 1987, Black Monday, October 19th. Hey, if you're ready to schedule your Next Steps meeting or come in for a family update if you haven't done your tax planning for the year, simply go to 800-928-4001, our website, or you can use our fancy dangled QR reader. Happy to have you along. If you want to know more, don't forget you can join our radio program. You can catch us on Saturday mornings from 6 to 7 on WIBC or anywhere you choose to listen to podcasts. We're on a, a multiple radio stations. We're getting more and more listeners on the podcast. And if you're a video guy, our YouTube channel is picking up as well. Have a great week. And if there's anything at all we can do for you, don't hesitate to let us know. Happy Halloween.